one to nine generation 90s monday here on triple m there's weezer buddy holly on the grill team now we'd like to talk about something sensible yes i'm serious right now so i've sent those two drunk idiots <laughs> in melbourne emma yeah. freeman and They're maddie gone. john's home because uh yeah we want to we want to be a bit sensible well our next guest maybe like us has never been in the Logie, so they can't appreciate what they're going through this morning but um he's a good mate of the grill team, we're welcome back into the studio. New South Wales Minister for Corrective uh, Terrorism, uh, Counterterrorism, Corrections and Veteran Affairs, the Honourable Mr. Dave Elliott. Dave, thank, hello, mate. Good, good. Thank you. Yes, uh, it is appropriate because politics is show business for ugly people. So <laughs> let's get rid of the uh, let's get rid of the logies and bring on the politicians. So you, uh, we believe you are responsible for getting us into Long Bay Jail, which we are uh, eternally grateful for. Yeah, we appreciate it. It was a horrible place but the people that work there amazing the officers yep and it's an eye-opener for us when we went there well i'm glad you took an interest i know the officers uh, were delighted to have you there because it is a it's a tough job corrections officers do uh, do it do it tough uh, and a lot of them um, do it without any thought of consideration long bay jail um where does that rank as far as jails uh, go in, in new south wales is it where like in as far as the worst go which is the worst place to go to Oh, Supermax in Goulburn is probably uh, the crappiest of all places if you're uh, if you're an inmate. Uh, ironically, officers like to go there because uh, it's sort of seen as uh, you know the the peak of their career. It's where you've got to be well trained and well disciplined. But uh, wow. Supermax is where the really bad guys go. Long Bay is um, a na- is, is a nasty place. It's probably up there in the top three so far as uh, attention and uh, and the, the 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 lack of quality inmates. Oh. Now, David, you've got quite a uh, mouthful when it comes to your job, counterterrorism, corrections and veteran affairs. So let's talk about tomorrow. It's a massive day for us, ANZAC Day, and we've got lots to talk to you about and all the great little things that are going on. Um, what about the safety for us tomorrow? So we've all got our different parts of Sydney we're going to be going to. In the dark, you know, leaving home for 4.30 to get there for 5, 5.30, can we be safe tomorrow? I think tomorrow um, is an important day for everybody, and we need to realise that you know if you if you don't turn up to an ANZAC Day event tomorrow because of the threat of terrorism, well you're already a victim of terrorism. And I'm really encouraging people to get out there uh, and continue the commemoration. Uh, of this very, very special day. We'll have record numbers of police. There's no specific threat to New South Wales, uh, no specific threat, but that doesn't mean that we won't have uh, uh, contingencies out there. I mean, it's a special day for me. I was an army officer. I spent time peacekeeping, albeit in the rear with the gear and the beer, but uh, I spent some time uh, in the army, and I get to go tomorrow uh, and enjoy the day with uh, with the blacks that I served with as well. Good Beautiful. Beautiful. Well what, what about the topic of uh, correctional centres? Um, inmates at Bathurst correctional centre. What are they doing to help uh, the veterans? Oh, Bathurst is an exciting place. I mean, this is the untold story. You guys have been out to Long Bay where, there's, uh, where it's a tough prison, but Bathurst is a place where we've actually got uh, inmates training dogs uh, to be companions for veterans. Oh, wow. So I've actually brought my uh, brought my portfolios together, and uh, and I've been out there. In fact, I took my teenage boy out there uh, during the holidays. It's a very, very special place. So we've got veterans out there. Part of their rehabilitation is to bring dogs in, train them up to be companion dogs, and then uh, and then veterans that are returning and discharging from the military that, uh, you know, obviously... Have, it's proven that a companion animal can help you with your mental health. So these bikes will take these dogs off the uh, out of Bathurst prison, and uh, and it's it's just a wonderful heart heart wrenching uh, opportunity for us to give something special back to our veterans. Now for Anzac Day as well, David. There's another great project you're working on for the uh, war, war Memorial at Hyde Park, the Soil Collection yeah, Project. Can you tell cool. us about this? Yeah, the Soil Collection Program is uh, is part of the upgrade of the War Memorial in Hyde Park, and I know you know listeners would probably walk past that. That's a war memorial and not think of much of it, but it was built in the 1930s. Because the money ran out because of the Great Depression, uh, we actually ran out of money, so it hasn't been finished. Now, uh, Gladys Berejiklian has given me $18 million, along with the Commonwealth, for uh-huh. $18 million, and we're upgrading it to what it's originally supposed to be. Part of that serum, part of that... Um, uh, that museum is going to commemorate the 1,600 towns, hamlets, villages and cities across New South Wales where, where people signed up to the first AIF from. And part of that commemoration will be a bit of soil from each of those 1,600 hamlets and towns. Uh, and so if you come from, you know, out back western New South Wales and, uh, uh, and you uh, know your great-uncle John um, uh, signed up from that part of uh, town, well, you'll be as part of the state, you'll be able to see some soil and the name of, of where that enlistment post was. Well, Very tomorrow's good. tomorrow's an amazing day. Um, you know, I, my grandfather served in uh, World War Two, um, so I've always right. got a soft spot for it. I, I remember, as a rugby league player, standing on the field. Um, some of my fondest memories were of the last post 
being played and the shivers that set up my spine, I, I think of about to this day. And I, and I know tomorrow the players will be playing on Anzac Day will be feeling the same way. And it's, a, it's a, such an important day. I think, Dave, as we're, the younger guys now are getting the fact that these young kids, we went to Gallipoli in 2013, we actually saw how they got off. There's more young kids than old, kids, how old they people, got, wasn't how they, there? How, but how, how these our soldiers in 19... 12 or 13, yeah. whatever it was, how they got off the boat and basically had that in front of them. Well, Mark, you're a classic reflection of your generation um, uh, because, I, and I really got to pay tribute to uh, Todd Greenberg and the uh, NRL and, of course, the ARU as well. Uh, they have embraced Anzac Day better than any codes that uh, I can even imagine. They have, you know, the wonderful games that are being held tomorrow and the commemorations and the War- Waratahs match on Friday night. They had the last post and Sir Peter Cosgrove there. It's been great. Mm. Because you, Mark, what you just said is exactly what the, 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 the Generation X are doing. They are embracing Anzac Day. In the 70s, mate, nobody went to Anzac no. Day. And now it's it's the Generation X, it's the it's the uh, Generation Y, the Millenniums. You know, they're like 10 deep along, um, uh, along the Anzac Day parade now. Tomorrow in my own electorate up at Castle Hill, we'll have 20,000 um, turn up to that yeah. memorial service. The same manly dam on the Melbourne But When we were in um, Turkey, the young kids, I reckon, 80 to 20 yep. in terms of, of Aussies and Kiwis yep. that were all there and they said, we're on our European trek, we had to be here on this day and they set the whole year up around that particular Well, event. I've got a soft little dream that instead of going to schoolies that my sons will do Kokoda wow. and instead of doing, you know, those, those traditional end of HSC events, uh, we'll get kids to go to Gallipoli, to Beersheba this year in Israel, where it's the 100th anniversary since the uh, the light horse. You know, go to the Western Front. Yes, of course, the international uh, situation is dicey at the moment, but as I said, you know, if we start uh, walking away from our military heritage because there's a couple of mad guys yeah. in the Middle East that want to take us on, well, then we're already victims of terrorism. Well, good luck with that. Uh, getting them away from school as that is. Because yeah. <laughs> hey, it's good to see you, boy. Uh, your advisor in today, John Eels. He's a... yeah. <laughs> We've got to break your advisor out there. He yeah. is John Eels. Yeah. 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 Reincarnated about 20 years ago. Max will take a photo of him and put him How on our social. How tall is he? He's, 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 he's security tall. as well. Yeah, he does right? security as well. Yeah, he's a tall bloke. He actually oh, looks yeah. intelligent. He's got intelligence. Yeah. He's got a bit of swagger <laughs> about him. Yeah. What's his name? He's a dribbler. His name's Lee. <laughs> and he's a complete and utter dribbler. Hey, David, well, all the best for tomorrow. Thank you very much for coming in and having a chat. Thank you for having me. Hey, Captain Hill, I'm lucky to have you, mate. Good on you. 14 to 9.